if you're working on the development of a website and specifically if you're developing a theme or a module, caching can become a bit of a pain. Every time you make a change to that theme or module, you're going to have to go back to configuration, performance, and clear all caches, and then reload the page on the site that you're on in order to see the changes that you just made in that theme or module. So we'll say that we're developing a theme, for instance. Even if we keep this page open and then open the site in a new tab, it's still a bit of a hassle to say we made some style change in the template that we're building. It's still a pain to have to go back over to this tab, clear all caches, wait for that to clear, go back to our site, and then reload the page. Because you're gonna be doing this very frequently when you're developing something like a theme. Thankfully, Drupal 8 has a solution to this problem. It can get a little bit complex though, so you'll have to follow along closely here. We need to go to our file system. I'm just gonna open up mine in cPanel. You can open yours wherever you are. And I should note that you should only, 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 only do this on the development version of a site. Don't ever do this on a live website. So in your Drupal root directory, you're gonna navigate into the sites directory and we're going to copy this example.settings.local.php file into the default folder and give it a new name. Before we do that, we need to give ourselves write permissions to the default folder, which we should not have right now. Let's make sure we have permissions to write to that. And once we've done that, we're going to copy example.settings.local.php into sites slash default slash settings.local.php or rather we're copying it into the default directory which is inside the sites directory and we're giving it the new name settings.local.php which is the same name it had before just without the example dot prepending it. We'll copy that and then go into the default directory. We're going to find settings.local.php. Make sure we have permissions to write to this. We should, and we do. And then we're going to check our settings.php file. We need to give ourselves permission to write to this temporarily. And we're going to edit this file. We're going to scroll down a ways, almost to the bottom. And when you get near the bottom, you should see a couple lines that look like this. It starts with a description that says load local development override configuration if available. You should see these three lines prepended with uh, hash marks in most cases, if file exists, uh, dir settings.local.php. When you find this, we need to remove these preceding hash symbols on each of these three lines. And that's the only change we're gonna make. Go ahead and save that. Then go back to your file system. Then in this settings.local.php file, we're gonna edit that now. And we're gonna scroll down a little bit until we find this line here and this line here. Settings cache bins render equals cache.backend.null. And then the same thing except with dynamic page cache instead of render. And here we're gonna do the same thing with those other lines. We're going to delete these preceding hash symbols. And that's all we're gonna worry about here. Let's save those changes. And then we're going to make one more change. We can go ahead and close this. We're going to go back up one level into the sites directory. And we have this development.services.yml file. Let's edit that very quickly. And we're going to add a few lines to this. So. First line is going to be parameters, colon, 
Then under that next line, we're going to indent a little bit and just do twig.config colon. Next line, indent from that one as well. Debug colon true. Next line, same number of indentations here. Auto underscore reload colon true. And then one more item at the same indentation, cache colon false. Save those changes. And now we're all set. Now, you may come across a problem here when you go back to your website. So let's go back to our site. And let's just say we want to go ahead and clear all caches to make those changes we just made go into effect. You might get a page that looks something like this, and this can be a little bit scary and intimidating. Uh, unfortunately, the documentation isn't great on what to do here, but there's an easy solution to this. If you get a page that looks like this, just navigate to your domain slash core slash rebuild.php. I'll give that just a second. And everything should be back to normal now. Just for good measure, I always like to go and clear my cache one more time just to make sure that all of the changes I've made are in effect. Clear all caches. And once we've done that, the site, even if it's told to cache and even if the caching modules are enabled, the site will no longer cache theme and module information. So if you're developing a theme or module, all you have to do is reload the page anytime you make a change. You don't have to keep flushing the cache manually over and over and over again. It doesn't even keep a cache anymore. That's why it's important that you only do this on a development site, never on a live production site. I'm not going to go through the process of editing a theme and showing you that it doesn't keep a cache because that would be very time intensive and you probably get the point at, at this point. But just make sure that once you're done doing all this, when you're done developing whatever it is that you're developing, to undo these changes, we'll start from scratch here. We're going to go back into our default directory. Open settings.php, or rather we're going to edit settings.php. And this shouldn't be that important, again, because this should only be on your development site that's not live. Just as a good practice, we're going to go back down and find these three lines and put the hash symbols back in. Save that. Uh, it looks like we lost our write permissions already, so let's get out of here. Let's check our permissions here. Give ourselves write permissions. Let's go up one level and make sure we have write permissions one last time on default. No, we don't, so let's do that. So we'll go back in. Check the permissions again. We're good. And now we're going to edit settings.php. Put those hash symbols back in. Right here. We can go ahead and just delete settings.local.php. Go ahead and remove the right permissions from settings.php. Go up one level. Remove the right permissions on the default directory. And finally, on development.services.yml, we'll delete these lines, everything including and under this parameters line. Save that. Go back to our site one last time, navigate once again to core slash rebuild.php, and you're all set. Everything is undone.